This is the first in a set of videos which look at simple feedback design. We're going to start by doing a review of some of the results that have been covered in the other sets of videos. Some of the videos talk about behaviour and they show how pole positions impact on behaviour. Other videos have focused on offset and give an overview of how some performance characteristics are affected by changes in gain. And there's videos and block diagrams showing how you form closed loop relationships. This video is going to summarise the results from those earlier videos as a preparation for undertaking simple feedback design. First then, links between poles and stability. And all this slide is doing is making the very simple observation that if the poles are in the left half plane, and we'll mark that over here, is the left half plane, then the associated behaviour is convergent or stable. And if the poles are over here in the right half plane, then the associated behaviour is unstable. And the other um, key point is the further you move from the imaginary axis, so here's the imaginary axis, so the further you move, the faster the behaviour. So the further to the left, the faster you converge, and the further to the right, the faster you diverge. These results can be summarised neatly in a slide like this. What you can see is clearly we don't want poles in the right half plane because that gives you a behaviour which is divergent, clearly not allowed. We also don't want poles which have a large imaginary part even if they're convergent because this suggests that you might be too oscillatory. What we really want is we want the poles to be down here near the real axis if possible and further to the left because further to the left means fast, some way to the left means OK, but you'll notice too near the imaginary axis and we will have slow behaviour, which we don't like. And then you'll notice there's this region in the middle, which is shaded blue, where we've used the word debatable, which says, yes, it's got um, an imaginary part, so there will be some oscillation, but there's also a real part, so there's convergence. And somewhere between here is where the oscillation begins to dominate the convergence as opposed to the convergence dominating the uh, oscillation. Now, the exact regions which are acceptable and not acceptable is not clear cut because it depends on many issues and that's why this area is somewhat fuzzy. Closed loop transfer functions. For a simple block diagram such as the one here where we have a compensator M and a compensator G, students should be confident at writing the following relationships. So the output is given as gm over 1 plus gm times the target r. There's the target and there's the output. The system input, and you will often need that because you want to look at actuator activity, so the system input u is m over 1 plus gm into r, and the error, which is the offset between the target and the output, is given as 1 over 1 plus gm times r closed loop poles. We need to work out where the poles are because a key design feature is to make sure the poles are in a desirable position. Now, if the closed loop transfer function is given by this, gc equals gm over 1 plus gm, then the closed loop poles are given by the denominator is 0, which is shown here as 1 plus gm equals 0. Now, if I assume that gm can be written as n over d, then the same as writing 1 plus gm equals 0 is writing pc equals m plus d equals 0. So again, that's a simple observation that students should be fluent with. Our objective, clearly, is to choose the compensator m of s to ensure that the closed loop poles are in desirable positions. So that's the poles of pc, which is m plus d. We need those to be in desirable positions. How about eliminating steady state offset? Well, we've shown, again in earlier videos, that the steady state offset can be determined by this formula. This is for a, a step in the target R. Now, while you can do ramps and other signals, that's very rare, and so most people just assume you're talking about a step. So here's the formula. The limit as s goes to 0 of 1 over 1 plus g of s, m of s, and that gives you the asymptotic error. Now, if you want to minimise the offset, which makes this ES as small as possible, 
then given GRS is fixed because that's the process, the only thing that you can really play with is the compensator M. And so what you'll see is in general, you can minimize the offset by making M of zero as big as possible. And in general, of course, people will argue that you should include an integrator because if you include an integrator, then it means the limit as S goes to zero of M of S is infinite. So the steady state error is zero. Disturbance uncertainty. Students should be confident in working out the transferences listed here. So what's the dependence of the output on a disturbance signal? What's the dependence of the input or the actuator movement on a disturbance signal? Now, this is a, only one example of a block diagram and you get some simple transferences. Students should be able to work out the transferences for slightly different block diagrams. So for example, where the disturbance is an input disturbance affecting you directly. Of course, there are other types of uncertainty as well, such as parameter uncertainty. And the key observation here is that when you have uncertainty of any type, the real system does not behave the same as the idealized one. And we need to be aware of how does this uncertainty impact on our behavior? And how can we choose the compensator M to minimize the impact of uncertainty? So in summary, when you design feedback, there are a large number of criteria that you're trying to meet. Number one, you're trying to reject uncertainty. And there are some videos on that which give a rough idea of why that's the case. You want to ensure closed loop stability. Obviously, if you're unstable, it's the, the loop's no good to you whatsoever. The system's going to break. But you don't only want stability. You also want to ensure that the closed loop poles are in desirable positions and therefore you get good behavior. And that means you need to know what desirable positions are. You want to ensure that the steady state gain is large enough so the steady state offset is small enough. The following videos then are going to focus on some simple heuristic approaches to meeting the above four requirements.